<laughs> I can see why this is the most popular Vietnamese dish in restaurants outside of pho, banh mi, and bún bò huế. Vietnamese broken rice served with air fried pork chops, my mum's special tomato sauce, spring onion oil, a plethora of Vietnamese herbs, and a humble fried egg. I have no doubt this homemade Vietnamese classic will take you and your family to Flavor Town. So it's time. It's hammer time. Let's put the E's in Vietnamese. There are a few elements in this dish. It may seem overwhelming, but hang in there with me. You won't regret it. Let's start with the pork chops. Grab a mortar and pestle and crush. Three cloves of garlic and a bunch of spring onion stalks until they are well bruised to release their fragrance. Remove and place into a large mixing bowl along with a tablespoon of fish sauce. I like to use son fish sauce. Two tablespoons of oyster sauce. Today I'm using the Lee Kam Ki oyster sauce. It's great. A tablespoon of soy sauce, a tablespoon of honey, half a teaspoon of anchovy salt, half a teaspoon of sea salt, half a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of black, black pepper, three tablespoons of neutral cooking oil, and a hundred mils of water just to loosen it up. Mix that well until it's combined. For the pork, I'm using pork scotch fillers today as I appreciate its meat to fat ratio. But you can use pork loin chops too. With a meat tenderizer or mallet, pound your pork chops to thin them out until they are about one to one and a half centimeters thick. Then massage that marinade into the pork and pop it in the fridge to marinate overnight. If you do not have a meat tenderizer, you can use anything with a bit of weight behind it, such as a pestle or even an empty wine bottle. To air fry the pork, remove the pork from the fridge an hour before, then place in your air fry basket and air fry at 210 degrees Celsius for five minutes. Then flip it over and air fry for a further four to six minutes, or until it's cooked through. Then remove and set aside. To create the sauce that brings this dish together, also known as nook mum, we're gonna crush three ditch seedies chilies and three cloves of garlic in a mortar and pestle. Then add three tablespoons of sugar, five tablespoons of water, three tablespoons of my secret ingredient, apple cider vinegar, three tablespoons of good quality fish sauce, I like to use some fish sauce, and juice from half a lime. Hot tip, be patient and mix it well until the sugar dissolves and the sauce becomes slightly viscous. Onto the broken rice. To steam the broken rice, rinse it under water until the water runs clear. Add it to a medium pot of boiling water and boil for about three to four minutes or until the rice grain is half cooked through. A simple way to tell is to grab a rice grain and squeeze it between your fingers. The rice grain needs to be squishy, but still a little bit hard inside. Strain the rice well with a colander or a fine sieve, then return it straight to the pot, cover it and simmer on low for 20 minutes. Then remove it from the heat and keep it covered until served. Now onto the spring onion oil. Spring onion oil makes everything better. So in a small bowl, add half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of sugar, and a bunch of finely chopped spring onion tops. Mix that well, then pour in 30 ml of neutral cooking oil that has been brought to smoking point. Mix well, then set aside. Now, this is something I've been wanting to share for a long, long time. It's my mum's special tomato sauce, which I honestly believe makes or breaks this dish. So in a small saucepan, add a tablespoon of oil and saute one brown onion until fragrant. Then add four tablespoons of tomato sauce, four tablespoons of water to thin it out, and one tablespoon of sugar. Bring that to the boil, and again, you guessed it, set it aside. We finally made it. The final element. Let's whip up some fried eggs to go on top of the rice. The fried egg in this dish needs to be sunny side up and here's the best way to achieve it. Take a no-risk approach and crack your egg into a bowl. 
In a small pan on medium heat, add 20 ml of cooking oil and then follow with the egg. Tip your pan down and baste the yolk with the oil until a thin layer of the egg white sets on top. That's when you know it's ready. Remove and add a pinch of sea salt on top of the yolk and set it aside. And it's finally time to arrange the puzzle pieces and plate up this incredible broken rice dish. Pack the broken rice into a rice bowl to mold it. Then remove carefully onto a large plate. Spoon on a teaspoon of spring onion oil and a tablespoon of mum's special tomato sauce. Then top with a fried egg and another teaspoon of spring onion oil. Slice the pork into bite-sized pieces and add it to the plate along with chopped cucumbers, sliced Vietnamese herbs, I'm using perilla, mint and basil, and a small bowl of milk mum, and it's time to tuck in. For me, this dish is all about the rice. The broken rice grain is a lot smaller than a normal grain, so it will absorb a lot of flavour. So move the egg to the side and generously pour on your nook mum, then put the egg back on and run that yolk, baby. Now, mix everything together except the pork with a fork and spoon. Yes, you heard correctly. You do not need chopsticks for this dish. I've never realised this until now, but it looks like a Vietnamese bibimbap. Mind-blowing. Anyways, I'm salivating. Let's get into this broken rice. Mmm, mum's tomato sauce. <laughs> the pork. I can see why this is the most popular Vietnamese dish in restaurants outside of pho, banh mi, and bun bò hue. The pork. It's sweet, it's sticky, succulent, and deeply marinated with the sunfish sauce and the anchovy salt. All the sauces that have coated the broken rice grains and the freshness that comes through really late from the, the cucumber and the, the perilla, the basil, the mint, it cuts through that creamy egg yolk and crazy amount of umaminess. If you love air frying your pork chops, you have to give this recipe a go. You'll smash it out of the park. Go on. Do yourself a favour for flavour.